Hello, I'm Kushali and your tutor here. Today we will be talking about order of growth. Here we have given introduction to Bigo notation. After this tutorial, you will be able to understand what is Bigo and how to calculate it. As a programmer, it is important to reason about the amount of time an algorithm will take. Many factors come into play when analyzing an algorithm's efficiency. They are like amount of RAM, cache memory size, CPU speed, CPU register size, bus type, and its speed. So, in order to make the analysis simpler and consistent with different computer architectures, we can think of an algorithm's efficiency in terms of its order of group, that is, BIGO. BIGO is an expression of how the execution time of a program scales with the input data, that is, BIGO notation is the language we use for articulating how long an algorithm will take to run. So let's look at the BIGO complexity chart. Here x axis represents the input size and y axis is the number of operations. Notice that each curve on the graph appear to start with the low number of operations. However, some grow much more quickly with respect to the input size. The difference between n square and n log n is phenomenal. This is the main idea of behind Bego notation. So let's get acquainted with some of them. Like over here, Bego of one is called a constant time, meaning it will always take same time to execute regardless of number of input. For example, accessing an IRA, where you specify the index of element you want to access, and you get it. So now let's move to the Bego of n. That is an algorithm whose performance will grow linearly, which is in direct pro proportion to the size of the input data set. Simple example can be simple for loop. Now, let's move to the ON, big of n square. This, it describes an algorithm whose performance is directly proportional to the square of the size of the input data set. This is common with algorithms that involve nested iterations over the data sets. Some exam simple example can be nested for loop for n elements. Now, big O of 2 raised to n denotes an algorithm whose growth doubles with each addition to the input data set. For example, recursive cal calculation of Fibonacci series. Now, let's look at the sum of the example. This is algorithm for a linear search where we search for an element in the given array or list sequentially. The maximum number of elements linear search has to look at is n, where n is the size of the array. Thus, linear search grows linearly with its input. Thus, it is O of n. Now, let's look at the another example. Here, this is a slow find duplicate method. It will be executed n times for outer loop and then n times again for inner loop. So basically it will be executed for n square time. Thus, this grows quadratically with respect to its input. So this way you can figure out what is big O of an algorithm. Here we are at the end of this module. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thank you for listening.